All clear, which way? Oh, you say something? I said I want to claw my eyes out. But unfortunately, it wouldn't do any good, because I already saw the awfulness. Will you focus? I'm focused. This pretty place is about to get uglified real quick by a bunch of freaking elves. Do you know when I saw all these people die? So this is a little bit difficult for me, okay? So why don't you reach down deep inside and try and find a small ounce of humanity? Just give me the thing. Just give me the thing. Just give me the thing. I didn't, didn't even want to come here. Yeah. Living all these repressed memories. I can't get it together. You're embarrassing. All right, which way? You don't know? You used to frickin' live here! For 1,500 years, not forever. That way, I think. Yeah, maybe. We are dead. We are so, so dead. Nobody pull a hamstring. Yeah, my Warm your butt cheeks up. Warm up your butt cheeks. Cut there. Copy that. There you go. Here it comes. I broke it. So. <laughs> The thing about time travel, <laughs> I can't believe I made a whole movie with this thing on. <laughs> yeah, does it look cool or? It doesn't feel cool, but if it looks cool, that's what matters. Do you have any idea what's coursing through my veins right now? Funyuns? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Orange soda? We are getting the whole team, aren't we? A duck! Good one. <laughs> you see what I have to deal with here? Ten years of this It's indescribable to work with creative people, especially people who make movies. It is such a thrill. No, it's, it's overwhelming when I think about it. And I keep saying to myself, I can't believe this is me. I can't believe I lucked out this way. Let's give it up for Stanley, guys. Woo yeah. Five lousy words they gave me to say. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Great director. Something you never forget. And thank you for all of this, and I hope that I didn't set into viewing back a few decades. <laughs> okay. I'll see you later. Thank you. I remember every cameo I've done since the first one. And I think I'm a very lucky guy.
being able to do this new version of Thor. It's hugely liberating and, 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 and fun. We had a um, big sort of fat suit, which I think was sort of 60 or 70 pounds. This little move. Yeah, yeah, that's the shimmy. It was the hottest I've ever been. <laughs> How does that feel? Oh, I mean, amazing. Looks like it's in the right <laughs> And we had, obviously, the beard, the hair, and I had these things that go in the mouth to kind of plump out my cheeks a bit, which sort of had a little effect on the voice as well, but probably in a good way, it was, it was a different thought. Hey, my name's Thor. I'm 22 years old. I live on Asgard, and I like sugar. We're shooting a superhero film, and here's one of the most recognizable superheroes, but he's just turned into a new character. What Chris does with that character and how it just kind of has this shift, his excitement was really palpable. <laughs> he had been playing the character for a while and really wanted to find something new. He has such dexterity as a talent. He's incredibly funny. He has just really lovely energy. Is he asleep? No, no. I'm pretty sure he's dead. actually think that in some weird, and it is a very emotional thing, but some weird, twisted up, fateful way, this character who, you know, has searched her whole life for a purpose, actually finds her purpose. And it's like this amazing, super emotional, beautiful thing. You know what I've become. Oh, I don't judge people on their worst mistakes. Maybe you should. You didn't. I feel very fortunate. It's been an incredible gift as an actor to be able to come back to a character that's as complex as Natasha. I think there's kind of a lot to explore there, and that is so exciting. I don't know how you're gonna get us through all that. Don't worry. She's got help. It was really beautiful to feel this sort of Marvel sisterhood, you know, and we're all coming from so many different films that we all came together. It's kind of like, I see what you do. I know your powers. Okay, show me what you got. And then we just clicked and we were just like cheering each other on. Everyone just kind of taking their turns, moving around, trying to help each other out. It was so fun. You share exactly. you know, this connection. So there's a connection without ever having met. And it's, cool. it's a really cool thing about the whole battle. That day was insane. <laughs> we were all in it together, and it felt electric. It was really, really cool. You know, I normally don't watch playback on the monitor, but I wanted to see that reveal of all the women of Marvel, and I thought it was really powerful and really exhilarating, and I was thinking of all of the young girls in the audience who will probably feel really inspired by that in one way or another, so it was a really nice thing to be a part of. Peggy has a career and she has a lot of self-respect, and she's pretty sick and tired of lots of men kind of not taking her seriously in the army and, and you know, playing around with her. I think Peggy relates to someone really fighting for what they believe in and really having to struggle all the time to prove themselves, and she being the only woman in this environment knows exactly what that feels like. It's not just the normal, everyday love story. There's something else. In the same way that we love Steve, because he exhibits some sort of determination and selflessness, it's the same thing that attracts her to him. Steve learned a lot from Peggy Carter. If you go back and look at the first Avenger, that is the essential relationship that I think turned him into who he is today, it turned him into Captain America. Her sense of integrity, her call to action, are all qualities that have been ingrained in Steve and are, are his best qualities. And they come from an uh, example from Peggy. And so I think it was critical that, that her character embody those essential qualities because he wouldn't be who he is without them. I'm gonna need a rain check on that dance. A week next Saturday at the Stork Club. You got it. Eight o'clock on the dot. Don't you dare be late. Robert has a whole career of great work behind him, and he was at a point in his life and his career where he was ready to break out and do something really big and exciting. 
John was in love with the idea of Downey playing the part. And we all felt so sure about him on a creative level. Because he wasn't instantly a slam dunk approval, I suggested we have screen tests. I remember walking in with Robert Downey Jr. the day of the tests. He was laughing and in great spirits and completely at ease. And he got in front of the camera and started saying the lines. I assure you the day weapons are no longer needed to keep the peace, so I'll happily transist to manufacturing bricks and beams for baby hospitals, making hemp pants and the like. But until that time, can I get you a drink? I don't want to call it an out-of-body experience, but it was one of those rushes that I'm sure like somebody would feel if they're about to play a big sporting arena, playing for the ring or something like that. It was just like, am I going to pass out or am I going to nail this? On that day that Robert screen tested, it was clear that there was no one else who can play that part. It was magic. It was exactly the feeling as a casting director with Kevin, with John, with everyone, that, that we all wanted to have that feeling like we have it. This is it. This is Iron Man. When we really distilled the core qualities that we wanted out of Captain America, I think there's a moral fiber to him that really isn't something that you act, that it's something you need to possess. And Chris Evans was someone who seemed to inhabit all of those qualities the most. So everyone was in love with the idea of Chris, except Chris. The only reason there was hesitation to begin with was because of the, the commitment. It's a big movie and you know, those, those are the movies that if, if they succeed, there's a change, a lifestyle change. And if, it's, if, if it fails, it's a whole other can of worms. Even Chris's reluctance to be a star <laughs> spoke to how right he was for the role because Captain America was not looking for the limelight. He was humble, he was modest. He needed to feel that in his bones. I love the character. He's everything that I wish I could be as a man, you know? And the creative forces behind the film are fantastic, between Joe and Kevin Feige. And, you know, Marvel in general, they, they, they know what they're doing. So in the end, I was so excited. Once he committed, he committed a thousand percent. You know, he stands there, tells the truth, and then kicks ass. Avengers! Assemble. Here we go. Nobody pull a hamstring. Warm up. This movie is massive. It was so much fun. Insane. That doesn't feel cool, but if it looks cool, that's what matters. I think I'm a very lucky guy. It's an amazing, super emotional, beautiful thing. It was really a joy. And the rest is 